Snaps almost instantly starts referring to Teresa as his daughter for some reason I don't understand. He kind of thinks he can sweep it all under the rug as long as he takes care of this Teresa option. So he'll be like, I gotta find, he's gotta marry my daughter. Lisa? No, Teresa, the other daughter. You got another daughter, boss? That mm-hmm. happens probably 40 times in this movie. And yeah. It's like, I didn't, th- I didn't know you had another daughter. I don't. And it's like, yeah. what? And and it's just like, Snaps, why don't you take a moment, take a breath, sit down. Explain what's happened. <laughs> Don't uh, just be uh, like, Dan. Uh, actually, Dan, if I could, uh, if I <laughs> oh, could step wow. in for just a moment, Sly Stallone. Uh, it, it's me, St- Sly Stallone, star of the movie Oscar and also Judge Dredd. I am the law. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, Daniel, you've made a complaint that can often be made of many farces. That if <laughs> yep. the characters only stopped for a moment and explained the proceedings, people would know what was going on, and there wouldn't be all this confusion. And maybe the uh, farcical laughs would die down, and instead of a big problem where people are slamming doors and running around, mm-hmm. they just sell things very quickly. It's kind of the same the same thing I say when I'm watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, starring <laughs> Lawrence David, in which <laughs> oh, very when, when, you, when there's so many times when all Lawrence has to do is apologize, even if he don't mean it, and the problem will go away, but he's just so damn stubborn, he just won't do it, yep. and he gets into trouble. And I'm like, Lawrence, maybe you should curb your enthusiasm yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's, for causing trouble. It's very frustrating for the audience. That's all I'm trying to say. You know, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true, Dan. That's true. Now, uh, what it really is is that you got to uh, believe that farce exists in a kind of different space, a kind of farce space in which logic is more important than uh, reality. Is that yeah. a way I could put it? Does <laughs> sure. that make sense? And so each farce I didn't know event that you had, is. You- such a dramaturg background. I also I also uh, didn't uh, okay, realize that's... until just now how much Sylvester Stallone sounds like Natasha Leone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was her uh, I was her elocution teacher. <laughs> oh, awesome, great. Uh, uh, Dan, I actually chair the drama department at Yale University. Oh wow! Uh, okay. Right, I teach a class called Farce or Farts, in which I talk about the two main types of humor. There's the <laughs> okay. farcical type of humor, in which it is a chain of events that is intricately linked, mm-hmm. and there's also the crass toilet sort of humor. Oh, and they okay. both have their place in in the theater. I, I have see. To say. I not- imagine that you were just showing your class a farce, and then playing an audio recording of a <laughs> fart, and asking them to identify which is which. Oh, so you took the class? No. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the final. That's the final exam. People pass it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, great. I mean, I'm glad that I guess that's a brag it. on you as a teacher. People pass it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's good. I mean, it shows they've learned the difference between noises off and like a particularly wet fart. <laughs> <laughs> when confronted with both of them. I mean, yeah, so Dan- that would be noises on, I guess, in that case. <laughs> Very good, Stuart. Very good. Extra credit. Now, uh- <laughs> oh, I didn't know you'd enrolled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. This is yes. an interesting university. Yeah, yeah, it's Yale. It's an Ivy League college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so-called because we shot the movie Poison Ivy there, starring Drew Barrymore. Mm. The sequels were shot at other universities. Uh, that's what the Ivy Wait. League means. <laughs> Okay. So Poison Ivy 2 with uh, Alyssa Milano, uh-huh. that was shot at Harvard. And yeah. uh, Poison Ivy, the new seduction with Jamie Presley was shot at Brown. <laughs> oh, wow. Such a pedigree. Now, yo, yes. Uh, now, Dan, so I guess what I'm saying is you have you have hit, put your finger on the most prevalent criticism of the farce form. But at a certain point, uh-huh. don't you have to <laughs> accept the rules of the dramaturgical <laughs> form upon which you are enjoying? All right, I suppose uh, a willing suspension of disbelief is in order. Yep, that's my teaching assistant. <laughs> Willie, suspension of disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> Willie's been with me for a long time, and uh, someday he'll finish his doctorate. Okay. Groucho Marx just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been feeding me lines. <laughs> well, guys, I gotta go. I'm in talks to make a movie called Oscar 2, th- Too Fast, Too Oscar. <laughs> Uh, and it's the story of, uh, well, uh, you'll find out, but it's another <laughs> adventure in the life of that lovable tale, lovable, lovable character that America came to fall in love with, Oscar, which uh, the director, the chauffeur? John Landis, he told me that Oscar was the, yeah, well, uh, uh, and they just start calling my character Oscar. The way okay, that, uh, I got you. Like, the way that Nick Charles became the thin man, even though he wasn't the thin man in the voice movie. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is some interesting promotional copy for Oscar 2. <laughs> Oscar 2. So anyway, uh, John Landis told me that Oscar was the number one box office hit of 1991. 
Uh, and I don't know why it's taken almost 30 years to make the sequel, but we've been, I guess he's been working on the screenplay. It's like Blade uh, he's Runner. Got son, he's got his son Max on it, so I assume there's going to be a lot of high-concept bullshit in it. But uh, we'll figure something out. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. Well, so I'm pretty excited. Okay, well, thanks for dropping by, as you occasionally do. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, what else are we going to do today? <laughs> okay. I, I, I guess I don't know. Yeah, and I suppose are you guys should, going to maybe probably, we should take in like a Broadway show? <laughs> no, well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that. I guess we could stop the podcast saying and go to a Broadway show. <laughs> no, let's keep the podcast running. You guys seen this Hamilton? I've heard a lot about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we we both seen it. Yeah. Oh, uh, so you, saw, you didn't wait uh, for me? Thanks, I guess. Thanks for no thanks. I mean, I think you can see it a second time. It's got a different cast at this point. Oh, great. Well, I'll just sit on the couch and be silent for the rest of the show. Thanks. I'll close my eyes and take a nap until you're ready to leave. Okay, great. (laughs) Elliot, you won't believe what just happened. I I heard it, and I'm all the way over here on the other side of the country. Oh, wow. This is ridiculous. I just keep missing him. Yeah, I got to start locking my door. (laughs) Well, I think he'll just break through. He's a a mountain of a man. Yeah, he's very strong. Uh, So... Okay, anyway. so, Dan, I'm, I'm going to take the wheel for just a moment. Okay. Lisa and Dr. Poole have hit it off. Snaps, he reconnects Anthony, Teresa, and he gets the jewels back. Mm-hmm. And Snaps learns that, so the maid has left, so they hire a new maid. Mm-hmm. And who does this new maid turn